Last but not least, God, to allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. For you are my Christ, you are my Redeemer, my Lord, and my Savior. But most of all, God, I found you to be my very best friend. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 4, Nehemiah chapter 4, uh, in your time of study, I would that you would read the, four, the entire chapter, chapter 4, but for our time together, I want to try to get to the verses 1 through 14 in your hearing. Nehemiah chapter number 4, starting at verse number 1. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. There you should find these words. But, so, but it so happened when Sanballat heard that they were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and said, whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O oh our God, for we are despised turn their reproach on their heads and give them plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you, for you have provoked you to anger before the builders, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had a mind to work 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 now what happened when Sinbalad, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, the Ashidites heard what the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were being were beginning to be closed and they began became very angry and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we're not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said they would neither know, know nor see anything till we come into the midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near there came and told us ten times, from whatever place you turn, you, they will be upon us. Therefore, our position being behind the lower parts of the wall at the opening, and I set the people according to their families with their swords and spears and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord great and awesome and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I see. Make your prayers as I try my best to get through this. I want to talk from the thought as the Lord would be me. Spiritual wisdom for spiritual workers. Spiritual wisdom for spiritual workers. Already there are some that the title of this sermon will make no sense to. Because some are just simply religious and not spiritual. But for those who are spiritual, this particular text will make sense 
Because the context of this passage, Nehemiah and his men are engaged in work. The future of Jerusalem and Israel itself depends on the successful completion of this project. And as they labor, they provide a valuable illustration for those engaged in spiritual work for the Lord. The very success of this church, the Mount Moriah Baptist Church, depends on all of us coming together for the work of the Lord. Here in our text, everything seems to be going wrong all at one time. When you read this text in chapter 1, we see how Nehemiah prayed in chapter 2. We see how God moved from the prosperity of Persia to the desolation of Jerusalem. In chapter 3, uh, we're introduced, Dr. Mitchell, to the wall workers and discover that in kingdom work, no one can do everything, but everyone can do something. And because some work harder and Barack worked with more zeal than anybody else, the construction project was moving quite along. But when we come to chapter number four, uh, Minister Clinscales, things start to get complicated for Nehemiah. His arrival in Jerusalem was a threat to Sanballat and his associates. He wanted to keep the Jews weak and dependent. A strong Jerusalem would endanger the balance or the power in that region and it would also rob Sandal and his friends uh, of the influence and wealth. When things are going well, uh, uh, you better get ready for trouble because the enemy uh, does not want to see the work of the Lord progress. Uh, I know that's hard for some people to understand, but you need to realize and recognize that in the church everybody does not want to see the work of the Lord completed. Everybody in the church does not want to see things move. Everybody in the church, they talk a good game. And as long as their name is being called, as long as they are chairman of this committee, as long as they are chairman of that committee, as long as they can make up the rules, everything is alright. But you need to understand that, that just like in our government, we got some people in the church that when things don't go their way, they'll pack up their toys, they'll go home, and they don't want to be bothered. As long as the people in Jerusalem were content with their sandbox, the enemy left them alone. But when they began to serve the Lord and bring glory to God's name, the enemy became irritated. The enemy. This man got mad. As long as they was in a little sandbox, everything was all right. Now it's time to build this wall. And the enemy is getting upset. Opposition is not only evidence that God is blessing, but opposition is also an opportunity for the spiritual people of God to grow. Satan wanted to use the problems as weapons to destroy the work, but God used them as tools to build his people. Charles Spurgeon said God had one son without sin, but he never had a son without a trial. Chapters 4 to 6 describe at least nine different tactics that the enemy used to try to stop the work of the wall. First of all, Dr. Mitchell, they attacked the people with ridicule. Anybody ever been ridiculed before? You need to know that when you are working to the glory of God, you're going to have some people in your circle that all they can do is talk about you. All they want to do is ridicule you. All they want to do is tag you down because they're not the center of attention. And first of all, the Jewish people have to deal with ridicule. Verses 1 through 6, the plots of war. Uh, then they resulted in difficulties with the Jewish ranks of discouragement. Uh, you'll come to find out that if people uh, cannot take you down by ridicule, they'll try their very best to discourage. 
discourage you. Yeah. And then if ridicule don't work, if discouragement don't work, then you'll find yourself having to deal with very selfish people. Yeah. When attacks on the people fail to stop the work, the enemy then started to attack the leader. Can I pause parenthetically and let the people of Mount Moriah know that there are some people whose name are on the roll of Mount Moriah Baptist Church who are upset with Pastor Gray because the work of the Lord is still going on. You can ridicule me. You can try to discourage me. You can try to be selfish toward me. But the Lord called me to do a great work. And when they can't ridicule you, when they can't be selfish, when they can't discourage you,
at Philippi. Rely not on you uh, to be anxious for nothing, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication uh, and with thanksgiving, uh, let your requests be laid known unto God. Uh, and the peace of God, uh, which surpasses all understanding, uh, is able to guard my heart and my mind. Uh, I'm out of here now, uh, but you gotta understand that when you use it, wisdom uh, to do spiritual work. Uh, you got to recognize the danger around you. Uh, you got to rely on the deity above you. Uh, but you got to respond to the duties uh, that were assigned to you. Uh, in other words, you got to do your part. Uh, don't you worry uh, about what Pastor Gray is doing. Uh, you just do uh, what the Lord has told you to do. Uh,
about the state of the church in this present day and time. Because we spend so much time arguing over simple stuff.
church needs to know that the Lord is still in control. Yes. We saw on the TV the conviction of the police officer that killed the young man in his house. And I was a little angry, like many people. But Botham's brother bothered my spirit. That young man sat on that bench and told the world that you, you killed my brother. In my, th 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 this is what I heard him say. You killed my brother. And in my flesh, I ought to be angry. In my flesh, I ought to be mad. In my flesh, I ought to be upset. from his flesh. But he spoke from his spirit. He told that woman, I love you and I wish nothing but the best for you. And every day for the next 10 years, she's got to sit behind those walls and she's got to hear that, that boy's voice in her ear reminding her that you took something from me. But in spite of what you took from me, I still love you. Come in, Jesus' love can cover a multitude of sin. What you meant for evil, my God has the power to turn the thing around for the good. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you better go back and tell your enemy that what you meant for evil. But the Lord is on. 
this way. I'm trying to quit now. Because I told you I wasn't sitting good. Oh, man. 